lovely, lovely imps, please welcome the one and only Gayfesh, who you can see right down below with this adorable Hello. little avatar. Um, please welcome Gayfesh to the show. We are going to be doing a duo review of the new Martin Scorsese film, Killers of the Flower Moon. Um, which we saw earlier this week together, and uh, I certainly have been thinking about it all week. Um, if you are not subscribed over on Gayfesh's channel, it is exactly, the name is exactly as you would assume, Gayfesh, uh, E instead of I on the fish, but uh, Gayfesh. And you should go subscribe because Gayfesh does uh, an unbelievably uh, awesome amount of reviews on all kinds of media. And if you're into movies, if you're into Star Trek, you're gonna find all that kind of stuff over on Gay Fesh's channel, and you should go subscribe. Um, I literally just reviewed um, uh, a, a, the latest episode of Star Trek Lower Decks, as well as Dix the Musical. I was literally just talking about that today. I also cover a lot of like uh, strike news and, and and stuff like that. Yeah, and I also play Mario Wonder a lot recently. Base. <laughs> it's a fun game. All very good stuff. So please make sure you hop on over and subscribe to Gayfesh's channel. Anyway, welcome, and uh, uh, let's let's talk about this movie. It was a uh, it was a heavy one, yeah. Huh? It was a it was a long one too. Um, it was. Yeah. We saw it together, and mm -hmm. I, at one point I like check what time it was, and then like I lean over to you. I'm like, I know we're two hours into this, but we've still got two hours to go. <laughs> yeah, I was like, so I kind of lucked out in that. I was hoping that I would be able to make it through the whole movie without having to make a run to the bathroom uh, because there is no intermission, which I, why, why, why not? Just put an intermission okay. in. So, why don't so, they do it? I, have you, have you seen the news on that? There was actually some theaters that were throwing in an intermission and the studios were very upset about that. They're like, you can't, you can't edit our stuff unauthorized. So they were going after some, uh, some, some, um, some theater chains for doing that. And it doesn't look like it was a lot of them, but uh, yeah, the, uh, the editor was very upset about that. Yeah. I mean, and... I understand getting, getting frustrated, but also at the same time, I, and I know that this is going to sound like a little bit of a, a, you know, it's a bit of a petty critique. It's not really a true critique of the movie itself, but uh, it is difficult and you don't want to miss anything, especially in this movie where like it is, it is so dense. There is like, there was just, a, like, narratively, it's so important to see everything, uh, especially if you're unfamiliar, which I assume the vast majority of viewers are going to be unfamiliar with the, like, actual story of what happened. Um, uh, it, it seems pretty important to catch everything. I feel like I kind of lucked out when we went. But, um, yeah. Yeah, um, it's... Um... Actually, they they literally uh, because this is set in the uh, in Oklahoma in the 20s, they actually bring up the uh, the Tulsa massacre in the film. Yes. Yeah. Multiple and, points, actually. Um, there's there's even a point where um, a house is bombed. And one of the first reactions of other people is it's Tulsa. It's happening here. Yep. And, yeah, which was um, a, a bone chilling uh, uh, sort of first reaction for people to have. There's a scene in the film where um, where they're watching like they go into a theater and they watch a Fox News presentation on the Tulsa. It's a different Fox News. The the, the yeah. Fox News that we all think of didn't start till like the 90s. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah. Um, and uh, it's like a Fox News um, uh, presentation of 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 Tulsa, of the story of Tulsa. And, and yeah, it, especially like later on, um, it, it is, it is definitely a, a pretty bone chilling moment. Um, but yeah. Okay. So real quick for those who aren't familiar with this, with the sort of story that's going on here, killers of the flower moon is Martin Scorsese's, uh, uh, sort of fictionalized, but historically based retelling of, um, the sort of story of a, a string of murders that were, um, that were committed against the Osage people in Oklahoma, the native population in, in Oklahoma. And the Osage people, um, were in a sort of unique position in that, uh, the land that was, that was given to them by the U S government after they were relocated twice, if I remember correctly, um, maybe th possibly three times. Um, it was uh, either two or three times. Yeah, they were originally in Missouri, 
and then were moved down to uh, Arkansas, I think, and then to Oklahoma. And it just so happened that the, the land that they were moved onto actually contained an, an incredible amount of oil. And when that was discovered, the Osage people um, basically uh, split it, you know, more or less evenly among the, the tribe. And what that meant is that there was so much oil that more or less overnight, the Osage people became uh, a, a serious economic force to be reckoned with. And uh, following this, of course, uh, there was a, a string of murders. And these murders actually happened. And the movie is a sort of historical fiction based on this event. And uh, it, was, it was a very, very heavy film, um, but also extremely fascinating. And um, yeah, so I just wanted to make sure that people understood what, you know, the sort of context of the film and what the basic summary of the of the events are. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, oh, there's so much I want to say about this movie. So if you had to say what your what your sort of favorite thing about the film was, what would you say? Um, oh, favorite thing about the movie. Well, my first thought was actually one of my least favorite things about it, which was the length. Hang on. Yeah. I have... I'm trying to was put very your long. stream on screen. There we go. Um, yeah, uh, I, I've just got your your stream up so that I've got, you know, the audio visuals, visuals going to be delayed for my end, but uh, that, so that people can see you at least. Um, yeah, I, I, like I said uh, already, like theaters were putting in intermissions and they were upset about that. But like this, uh, you know, I, I, I don't see them being upset that like, most people are going to end up seeing this at home on streaming. I mean, it was, uh, wasn't it made for, for by is, is this one Apple films or was that, um, or is that Napoleon? The, the Ridley I, Scott feel, one? I think that, that was films? the Napoleon one was Apple films. Oh, okay. I could be wrong. Um, though. um I, I can, double but check I'm just saying quick. if you're, if you're making a three and a half hour movie and you don't put an intermission in, you can't really be upset when people want to take a break. People do have bladders yeah. and theaters sell, you know, uh, popcorn, which makes you thirsty. And then they sell, you know, soda, which makes you pee. So yeah. <laughs> like, I, I, I understand when you are an artiste and you have a very specific vision that you want people to be in there for like, okay, but you also have to take into consideration just the realities of uh, people <laughs> and uh, their biological needs. And just like, like you could, in theory, make like a 25 hour movie and demand no intermissions, but nobody's going to watch that. So at some yeah. point you kind of have to stop being so elitist about it <laughs> and either make this a mini series or put an intermission in uh, yeah. some something to take a break, you know, uh, and, and it is one of those uh, movies where I think there is a a lot of artistry on display in basically every aspect of the production. Um, so it, it's one where you don't like, <laughs> I don't want to leave like in, in the middle of a movie ever, like usually, but especially in a movie where I feel like I'm really glued to it and really pulled into the story. Um, well, and you, you did have to leave once you had to, yeah, like, did. you yeah, missed a murder. <laughs> yeah. I missed one of the main, yeah, exactly. I missed one of the main murders. Now, thankfully I, I was sort of able to, to buy context I think I literally walked out. The moment that I walked out was like the scene right before it where, <laughs> which was a very awkward time where to walk out. they're plotting the murder? Yeah, they're <laughs> plotting the murder. And then it like, there's like a, a very brief moment where uh, Leonardo DiCaprio's character like crosses the street during a KKK parade. And like the people, yeah. the guy in the KKK parade just like lifts up his mask and is like, hey there, Eust Eustace, I think his name is, right? Eustace? Um, uh, what's it? I don't remember. It, Everett uh, or something like. I don't remember what it was exactly. Let me. It I started think, with I, an I kept E. I remember was that. Uh, Ernest, Ernest. It's Ernest. Ernest. Not it's one For of some those, some of those old Eustace. timey names that start with an E that you don't hear much anymore. Yeah, it's like the guy just like flips up his mask, like, "Hey there, Ernest. Uh, I hope you have a good day." And it's like literally like it, it's it's crazy. So. Uh, there's so much that I want to say about this this movie, and yeah, it was it's one of those movies where, like I said, I did not want to get up, I did have to, uh, and it, it does kind of come to a detriment of the pre at least the presentation of it. But um, 
stuff that I really thought was incredible in the movie. First of all, the thing that I wanted to shout out the most was the costume work um, was next level. Uh, it was genuinely incredible. Basically, every aspect of the costuming department was just knocking it out of the park. There's a scene in particular. There's a wedding scene, uh, probably like, I don't know, uh, maybe a fifth of the way into the movie. Um, and it's... it's Get it's Epaulets. Not... It's awesome. Yeah. The, the, like the and, and so I went and looked into this afterwards, and it turns out that the Osage um, like tribal um, center... Um, was hugely involved in the creation of this film and that all of mm -hmm. the native outfits were were handmade and coordinated by the Osage um, Tribal Center, um, which is, like, super well, awesome. amazing. So they're, they're, like, historically accurate, handmade, um, and also made by the, the people who are this story is about. And, um, and that was... It was this wedding scene just... Again, it's not like a, it's not like a, like you're going, the, the scene is not supposed to be like the world's most fantastic wedding ever, but the work that's on display is so detailed that it's breathtaking, even for, like they, this, the place, the town that they're in is like a pretty rural town, all things considered. And, uh, and so, you know, it's like a rustic wedding, but the outfits are just remarkable. And they, 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 I, I just found myself like stunned by that scene. And it's not the only scene either. There was a number of other scenes throughout where I was just, I, I just found myself marveling at how good the um, the costume design really was and how much care went into it. Um, no, no cut corners on that front. Um, and of course, uh, you know, I, I don't think, I don't think you, I think you'd be hard pressed to find a Martin Scorsese film that wasn't uh, like uh, cin cinematic, like as far as like uh, visually, uh, very, very well done. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, there's none of those sort of scenes that you run into. Right now, even in some very high-budget productions, you'll run into scenes where it's just, like, under under lit and you can't see what's happening. And that was not a problem at any point in this film. It was it was incredibly well, I, competently done. Um, I suspect that's probably because it was shot on film. Like, yeah, I, I, yeah. I assume it was shot on film. Yeah, a, a lot of times in, in cinema when things are, uh, oops, are under lit it's they're filming on digital yeah and um i don't know all of the particulars as to why that is i'm sure you know better than i do you went to film school um, yeah i mean part of it is just that like on digital there is a uh there is a there's a fix it in post mentality that has taken over most digital uh productions but yeah. people don't realize like people don't realize that like lighting is incredibly difficult to fix in post because you well, because you can't fix what hasn't been captured by the camera and so with film there's like this there's this tendency to be very careful about it and i mean i think another that just speaks to martin scorsese and the people that he works with just the level of experience that was going into the production of this film that there's like yeah. oh okay we have a team of people who know what they're looking for, who know how to deal with lighting, who know how, who know how to deal with shooting at night or shooting in dark situations and not have it look um, fake or underlit, which I think well, they did a really good job One of the big of problems that we see in cinema just in general, and like it's particularly a, a Marvel issue uh, just in terms of lighting, is how because they've got the fix it and post mentality where like a lot of times you will just be shooting an actor on a green screen and you don't know what the final product is going to look like, which means everything is just evenly lit because there's no intentionality to the lighting because you yeah. don't know what scene it's going to be. You don't know where that character is going to be. They will sometimes just replace the objects that the character is holding in their hand. Yeah. And when you've got it like that, when you're like, well, OK, we need this. We need to shoot this scene so that it can serve any purpose we need it to in the future. Of course, it's going to look bland and uninteresting because it wasn't shot with intention. Yeah, and and that is a that is there is no such issue in Killers of the Flower Moon. It's every scene um, was very clearly shot with intention. That this was a this is a masterfully cre like created film, um, and it it shines as a result of that. Um, and it makes it a it makes it a nice film to watch, even though the the the, the like message and the story that's being communicated is painful beyond like beyond painful um yes i i literally like my my day was done after watching this movie 
Um, <laughs> I'm not even kidding you. I went home and I felt so bad that like I I like laid down and just couldn't stop thinking about the movie. It was just it really upset me. And uh, I that was absolutely intentional on Martin Scorsese's part. Um, I don't want to like. I mean, there's not much to be spoiled because it is a historical. It's a historical event. You, event. Can, you can read about it, but the fact that like. The fact that basically uh, it was just the movie focuses specifically on two characters, which is um, Ernest, um, uh, Ernest Burkhart and uh, and Molly Burkhart, who is is his wife, who is a full blood uh, Osage native. And um, and. Like the focusing on them makes it not just a story about murders, but also a story of perpetual deception and gaslighting and it is just it is it is nightmarish to witness to unfold um to the degree that like for the whole movie there's like a part of you that's hoping that 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 like there's some piece that hasn't been revealed to you yet but if you're familiar with the historical event you know that there's not you know that entire time that even though you're like oh god it can't it, like it can't be this fucking cruel and it is of course yeah um, well and i it's also interesting like uh the way because I have seen Scorsese films before and he has had like death scenes in his films that he's played up with more style than this. Yes. Every single murder in this film is not played up with style. It is just shot very matter of factly, very blankly, very like you don't have any like cuts no when dignity. the murder happens. No... It's just it's just the person slumps over dead and the camera continues rolling. It's it, especially and, the um the 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 killing of Molly's sister in the yes. woods is it is so it's like it's sickening because like obviously it's still it's it's still a a studio film but it has this energy of like a snu like you're watching a snuff film. It's horrible. Um and and unsettling and sickening and I think it's good. I think it's a good thing that the that every aspect of this movie is not like it's not a uh, hyper dramatized like most uh you know like you'd think of like a you know you think of like a gangster movie or whatever and that might be based well, you, on you, you would have figures. you would have spooky mood lighting and and like eerie music and like a lot of like close up shots of the different characters as the yeah. murder scene is coming up. That that's not how Scorsese plays this at all. Not at all. Everything just like murder scenes are shot like every other scene yeah and and uh and it's definitely it definitely contributes to a a deep unsettling feeling throughout the entire movie um, um yeah one thing that i will say that i was thinking about um and this was something that i was talking to you about is um the movie especially at the end really hammers home the um the way that society has treated uh, Native American women as disposable and that's an, an ongoing issue that like Native American women are murdered at a substantially higher rate than basically the rest of the population and yeah. so often just nobody cares about it yeah and, and, and in fact to note on that the, at the beginning of the movie one of the things that happens is there is a sort of moment of narration there's a few moments where the film like enters it like exits that that like raw sort of historical presentation and goes into a more filmic thing. And it's, it's usually to hammer hone this type of thing. Like that, that one thing in the beginning where it goes, it lists off the names of people. Uh, and it's like died, like, like how they die was never looked into by the police, was never looked into by the police, never investigated, never investigated, never investigated. Rule the suicide. Whatever. Yeah. Rule the yeah. suicide. And it's just like this, this just like relentless, like, like 10 person deep, Never investigated, never investigated, ruled a suicide, never investigated. Uh, horrible, uh, horrible, to f horrible. And but yeah, anyway, that that plays into exactly what you're talking about here. Yeah. Um, but one thing that I do also notice is like, because I, I mentioned as we were leaving the theater that I think this film has poses a good opportunity to get this talked about more. Because, I um, yeah. no, well, I, I mean, what is it? Uh, the hashtag say her name was like, wasn't that originally for like missing native women? 
Um, uh, I don't know if it was the hashtag, but the term, the like, the yeah. the catchphrase was uh, at least very early on used for missing and murdered indigenous women. Um, if you look it up online, you can actually like you can find some of the earliest posts using that as a catchphrase are referencing that. Um, and yeah, yeah it, it very much uh, seem the film seems very aware of that and front loads that um, so that those you know these stories stick in your head from the very beginning to the very end. And even with all of that and with how in the film, like it takes literally begging the president to yeah. investigate the murders for them to actually be taken seriously. Um, actually, with arguably all of it that, takes more than that because they go and they beg, the, they send somebody to beg the president and then that guy gets murdered in DC and then they have to send like half uh, including a extremely sick uh, uh, Molly Burkhart to the to to then go ask the president again, and even then they're like the president has like five seconds to talk to them. It's yeah. just it's it's wild, and like there's basically but even with all yeah. of that, the reason that this story is being told, the reason that uh -huh. we know about it, is because the Osage are wealthy. Yes, yeah. and how many stories? are never going to be told how many stories are nobody even like, like how many native uh, women have been murdered and disposed of that nobody is ever going to find out about because they weren't wealthy. Yeah. Um, and not to discount these people, these people's stories are important. And I, I think that the, the fact that this story is being told is, is very important, but there was something that I was thinking about how with how much it took to even get like the, the Osage, like they said, per capita, the Osage were the wealthiest people in the world at the time. At the time. Yep. Um, and also it's really interesting to see how that, how that's portrayed because even though the Osage are the wealthiest, they've been uh, declared uh, incompetent to uh, manage their own affairs. Anytime they want to withdraw money and spend it, they have to go to a white man and uh, and say what they want to spend it on. Yeah, it, it's wild how, uh, despite their wealth, their rightfully held wealth, um, they're controlled in it. And it's interesting that, that like the class angle is probably one of the parts of this movie that, that I think is underbaked that could have been analyzed a little further, but also I understand where they were aiming with, with the film. But um, yeah, the fact that like, it's like the the money is the only reason, is par partially the only reason they ever even end up getting any attention, but also that money is the way that like, they're, e they're not even able to have money in the same way as like, uh, as, as like the white people around them. That there, there, there have been ways to, that have, that have been designed and built around them to control their ability to to use their own money to have access to their own money and additionally to like actually like live like a like like wealthy people of the time would be able to um it's really it's really strange how that is and then of course there's the other aspect of like how all of the businesses around that they that they uh have to interact with are also um also like just rip them off all the time like there's that part there's that really horrible scene in the um in the uh oh, funeral the, home when they're talking to yes where where like uh he's pointing out he's like come on like i saw the funeral for this guy it didn't go over 300 bucks and you're charging them like what uh over 2000 and and yeah. then uh, after you know pressuring him like eventually the the funeral guy like you know has enough and then just basically goes on this racist tirade about how the Osage don't work at all and like you know we white people we're you know we're trying to work for a living so the, of he course we're going to take uses, their money yeah and he literally uses the term oh you're you're he's like you're charging the phrase he's like you're charging me Osage prices that's fucking bullshit yes. and he's like yes. screaming at him about it and it's like oh my god like it's just there's so many layers of heinous behavior on display in this in this uh, movie oh my god it, there's so much and it's like and and yet and like it's it, you can't even like it's there's no like there's no like i said there's there's no fictionalization on the historical facts that like that anybody can like say oh well you know this is a fictionalization no this is just it's all all of the aspects all the worst aspects of this film are 100 percent historical truths and that just I makes mean, the fact even that harder 
the fact that he like casually walks past a KKK uh, yes. um, parade yeah. where the guy lifts his hood and just says, you know, uh, hey, Everett, how you doing? Like they they just they, they're buddies. They know each other like he's friends with the KKK, even though he's married to to an indigenous woman. Yeah. There's another <laughs> scene, too, where um, there's another scene where uh, uh, the sort of main villain of the film uh, um quote his nickname is king and that is a whole other sick level of oh yeah um and this is denier robert de niro's character uh his name is uh bill king uh heart or something along that line hail 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 bill king hail and um and uh he or was it hill i think it's i think it's hail um it's hail or hill it's one of those yeah and and there's another scene where um so first of all his character like he's he's the most evil guy in the entire movie and also he's like a he fetishizes the very people that he's actively plotting the the murder of and the exploitation of it's incredibly weird like he he speaks he speaks their tongue um and understands like their religion um he's he's extremely like uh he tries to make himself extremely involved even to the end where he believes that like oh they're not going to they're not going to convict me because they won't believe the lies that are being told about me they love me too much <laughs> yeah. it's so it's so incredibly weird and then um on top of that there's like another scene where like at the, the whole time he's always true to face through the whole film like to an incredible yes. degree he will he's like literally will gaslight people straight to their face like he'll tell them they will have the pr the truth in front of them and he will just be like that's not true but there's another part in the film that that ties to what you were saying about the KKK, where he's like, um, he's basically using the KKK's presence to like, he's like, well, you know, I don't like the KKK either. And we would hate to have them come into power. So, you know, you got to stick with me and you got to yeah. uh, like make your workers take out, you know, make, you know, you got to agree with me and, and agree. To, I think I think they're talking about like his workers taking out life insurance policies where he where he is named as the recipient. Um, which oh, is that a thing a, that happens. That was something he keeps doing. In, yeah, he in does the movie. multiple times throughout the film is make his workers take out a life insurance policy where he's the recipient of the money, and um, and yeah, he's like, oh, you know, well, I, it'd be a shame if the KKK came into power because I don't like them. I think they're like they're like ugly, brutish racists, unlike the ugly, brutish racist who's right in front of you, <laughs> yeah. like monstrous, just monstrous. And again, all of this, all of those aspects are are true historical recorded events that you can go read about this on wikipedia right now and you will find the real world version of it um on that front it deviates very little from the actual events and the actions that were taken and of course a lot of these were recorded uh, partially because of the way that they were done like that like insurance comp this guy taking out insurance policies on his own workers who are natives. And then he just finds a way for them to accidentally die or just die from a murder. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. He, of course he kills them, but like, well, there's, there's even a point he where takes... he's like, there, there's even a point where he's like, I know you want to get rid of this guy sooner, but we have to wait at least a year. Otherwise I'm not yes! going to get the insurance money for it. He's like, this um, guy owes me $25,000 and, and you, we, I know it would be convenient for us to kill him to get his inheritance to refer, So the inheritance goes to your side of the family, but we have to wait because otherwise the insurance company will start asking. It's fucking disgusting. So fucking sickening. Now, God, it's so. Fucking I also sickening. have to like point out uh, this is a Scorsese film, and Scorsese loves telling movies about you know uh, um, organized crime, and that's certainly yes. what this film is about. Um, he cannot but, like, help himself. <laughs> when he was writing the film originally, uh -huh. he had to actually stop and like start over from page one because he realized he was just telling a story about the white men. Yeah. And he wasn't centering the Osage enough in it. And even in the finished product, as we were watching this, um, it's still a story about the white men and the Osage are kind of secondary to it. Now, they're certainly portrayed very sympathetically and yeah. a lot of care is given to make sure they have voice in the film, but they are not the main characters of the film. The uh, the, the criminal, um, the, the organized crime uh, the the plots to murder them all, those guys are the main characters. Yeah, and I do think that that's a uh, completely a, a very very worthy criticism of the film is that like 
when you so when the film goes into like behind the scenes things the behind the scenes are always the plotting of the murders they are always the uh the the, the, the you know the the main characters Leonardo DiCaprio and 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 Robert De Niro uh you know conflicting for whatever reason so that it does suffer from that perspective issue and it's unfortunate too because um some of the most interesting parts of the movie in my opinion um, are when we do get to see the perspective of the Osage people, which is, it. it's like those, by the nature of the way that the, the narrative progresses, like we don't get to see them anymore because of the way that the film is framed. So like an example is like when the, um, when the when the Osage people call like all of the family heads together to have that discussion about like how they're going to take action, like what are we going to do about this? And there's that there's that meeting where they're talking about whether th what, where they're raising money and they're deciding whether they're going to send somebody to DC. That's one like, of the best scenes in the one movie. One of the best scenes in the film is this incredibly intense scene where there's just um, there's like people like openly weeping because somebody just got brutally murdered and like literally earlier that day before the meeting happened there was like a um these psychopath doctors who are on the payroll of uh of robert de niro's character decided they're like oh we can't move the body we have to do like an open air autopsy on site and with like and so there's just a bunch of people who have to watch their their family member get cut up in like the woods by a bunch of because they were trying to like find the bullet so that they could find hide the, the evidence of yeah, the murder. And they, yes, literally. They use they they use the autopsy as a way to hide evidence. It's and so there's like this scene after that where you have like a bunch like all of these family heads having to come together to make a decision. It's an incredibly intense emotional scene. And unfortunately, like I said, and there's another one later in the movie that we do get, which is when the FBI inspector or the FBI investigator yes. characters come back in. There's that scene where the Osage people meet with the FBI. Another really great scene. Unfortunately, very short. And so those two scenes like are some of the most interesting and uh, like tense in the film. We don't get to see as many because, again, it's so fixated on telling the stories. Uh, while not like favorably telling the stories, but still telling the stories of Ernest Burkhart and uh, and Bill Hale. Yeah. Um, yeah. So and there was uh, th there was like a specific line. I don't remember verbatim what it was, but like one oh, of the uh, uh, one, one of the elders. Sorry, not to interrupt you. I just got sure. a big raid. I'm just going to welcome them in real quick. Sorry oh, to interrupt you. Vosh welcome. Raid. Welcome to all of the Voshites. Uh, please come in and get comfortable. I am currently speaking with wonderful uh, friend of the stream, Gayfesh. We are talking Hello. about uh, Martin Scorsese's new film, Killers of the Flower Moon, which I think we both would recommend strongly. Um, uh, I don't want to speak for you, but uh, but I certainly recommend it strongly. I welcome you to all come in and get comfy. Thank you, Vosh, for the raid. Uh, uh, we've been talking about it for a little bit. Uh, but please get comfortable. We're going to be doing a whole bunch of other stuff afterwards, uh, even if you are not super interested in this film. So please uh, stick around uh, and welcome. Um, sorry for that interruption. Um, yeah. Okay. So when the uh, when the Osage elders are talking to the uh, the FBI agent, and they're like, you know, you know, you you white people, you you come onto our land and you say this is the way that we are doing things now, and uh, we have to follow your rules, otherwise we will be in trouble. But like. 20 years ago, if there was somebody out there who was just going and killing us, we would just find out who it is and we'd go and kill them. Yes. But we can't do it that way now. <laughs> it's it's wild, too. And I do think this is, to, to Martin Scorsese's credit, the amount of attention through the film that is brought to that, that, like, um, that, that basically the Osage people are repeatedly bound um, by, because they are being, they are basically threatened by a law that will take action against them that won't take action against the people perpetrating it. So there's this, there's not just, is it like they're not allowed to practice as they practice their own way of life as they would have, but also there's a slanted law that they're being subjected to that like, uh, yeah. And that scene really brings that, like, that's like the scene where it kind of comes forward as like a, the, as, as like a direct commentary, but you see it, uh, them come up against this multiple times throughout the film where it's like, um, even in the first council scene where it's like, okay, well, the, we've, we've been, we've been asking the Oklahoma state government for help 
over and over again and they will not help us we can't take action we can't do we don't have access to um to you know any form of justice so our only option is to go to washington which of course then that doesn't even work in the first case it's it's yeah it's a really wild uh uh, uh yeah it's, it's a really i think the movie does a good job of showing that of, of sort of highlighting how uh first of all unevenly the law is 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 done in the first place but how the 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 like the, the Osage people had a way that was working for them that kept their people safe and that's been stripped away and replaced with a law that they have no say in that also is slanted against them. Well, and that's how the film opens is they are doing a ceremonial burial for um for a peace pipe. Yes. Um, And it's all the elders talking about is like the children who are listening outside are, uh, you know, uh, this building, they will grow up with not speaking our language and not knowing our ways they will be you know uh they, they will be following a new way with white people and uh our way will just all our way is just going yeah and and it's it's just it's it's this it's a heart-wrenching opening to the film uh and also really sets the tone for the rest of this just continual erosion or er, erosion of a uh of a people's way of life uh, of of a people's culture on multiple fronts. There's not just one single front on which this is happening to them. Um, it's it's every aspect of their life is being attacked. Every aspect of their ability to live, uh, uh, you know, full and healthy lives. Also, there's another part that that I just remembered uh, that kind of plugs into this. There's this part in the beginning of the movie where Robert De Niro is talking to uh, Ernest, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio's character, and he's like. He's just like sort of giving him giving him the rundown of like like the Osage people, and he like brings up just sort of casually, oh yeah, like Osage women don't live very long, and it's like, and then you yeah. proceed to see that like the reason they don't live very long is because they're actively they're murdering them all, they're actively murdered, poisoned, uh, mistreated. They're not given access to any sort of medicine. The medicine that they that they are that are is like given to them by their own like tribal healers is like downgraded and and blocked or outright outlawed so it's like they have no path it's like oh yeah no wonder they die young like well and, you and make then the, the medication that they do get like like you know god the just molly's whole story because she has diabetes and mm -hmm. they use the the very fact that she is on insulin uh against her in a very heartbreaking way i don't want to get too much more into it but yeah. like like I'm watching this and I'm like, yeah, I, I I can understand why, you know, marginalized people might have an inherent distrust of Western medicine for uh, after something like this. You yeah, know? it's it's wild. And, and that was another part of the film that was like the gaslighting that like is so sickening because like, like it's so wild. OK, so in that scene, in the first scene where like the conflict over the insulin first happens, like the movie almost like at that point in the film if you're like the the film hasn't quite revealed to you the full extent of Ernest's actions um it you're only just starting to figure out how involved he he is in everything which is very involved um and Molly is like I don't want like why do I have to take this like white people medicine it's poison like it's not good for me it's not helping and he's just sitting there like no you're fucking crazy and he like he literally has like a racist tirade um, like he go, he goes like extremely hard on like the medicine that she had been getting previously from, from like the native, uh, like native healers all the while that it is actually fucking poison and it, yeah. it is actually yeah. being poisoned. And it's like, yeah, uh, like again, it's like even the medicine that does work, that is truthfully, uh, like is like maybe scientifically proven can't be like that science can't be trusted to actually be able to filter through down through the fucking layers of racism to actually be able to reach people so like it's completely rational that people would not want to engage with that type of structure whatsoever and it's like the the film does such a good job of portraying that without like uh which i think is something that like in broad com in broad political conversations i think that a lot of people miss the mark with um like being able to actually discuss this topic of why like certain peoples around the world don't trust, you know, Western medicine or whatever. And they, 
they frame it as like, oh, it's like it's like anti-intellectualism. It's like anti being an anti-vaxer, but it actually isn't. It comes from um, no actually my fears. Yeah, my the last time that we accepted medicine from these people, it was it was literally tainted. It had been actively poisoned because people wanted our land. Like you're gonna yeah. you're gonna have a very rational reason for distrusting the science. But that, that is saying, like, even if the science is true, you're going to distrust the suppliers or the people who are giving it to you. And, and when you're uh, when you're engaging, like when when a people, an entire people group is subjected to that level of systemic gaslighting, it's just the damages it echoes for generations. And it's I'm, I'm happy that the film actually tackles that issue so head on, like that it's a, a core part of the film. There's so much in this movie, and you know we mentioned at the beginning uh, that it is really long, and I feel like the length is is you know it's rough in the theater, but it's it is actually really good that it's as long as it is in a lot of ways because I do feel like there's so much that needed to be talked about, and I'm glad that they gave time for all of those things to be talked about. Well, and um, Scorsese who was talking to about how he had actually been influenced by um, Ari Aster. Yes. Uh, who who directed Hereditary and Midsommar and uh, Bo is Afraid and how he was in- influenced by the slower pace of those films that lets things slowly build and, and gives things time to breathe. And um, that, like Ari Aster, I think is, right now, like him and Jordan Peele are like the best horror directors out there. And to to see, uh, you know, for, for a long time, horror has been treated as like, you know, it, it's been treated like, you know, sci-fi and fantasy where it's not really taken seriously. But I think some of the best um, filmmaking out there right now is coming out of horror. And yeah. so to see Scorsese, you know, a veteran legendary director, you know, give praise to, you know, one of the, the newer um uh, horror auteurs um, and take direct inspiration from some of my favorite films of the last decade to uh, to to influence the way that he's making this film. Um, you know, I, I can appreciate that. Um, I still I, I think there's probably still a way to make this a two hour film. Um, I think it would be harmed for it. Um, but I also think like something like this, like this could have been a mini series and would have worked just as well, in my opinion. Yeah, I do. I do think that um, that there could have been. Yeah, I do think the series. I mean, I don't know that. I don't know if Martin Scorsese has ever done like a like a serialized mm-hmm. uh, thing like that. But I do think that that could have worked as well. Um, and perhaps that would have even allowed it more room to dwell on certain issues that didn't get as much, um, you know, as much attention. Um, but yeah, even in its current form, I, I, I do think that like, I, I don't think that, pe- don't be daunted by the length. Uh, those of you who are listening, uh, it, it is. Oh, and I looked it, this is an Apple, uh, film, oh, it so is? Okay. It, sh- it should be on Apple TV plus fairly soon. If it's not already, I don't know how they're planning that whole release thing, but okay, you know, so m- m- movies be... these days are. Movies these days are going on streaming sooner and sooner. Like a lot of the horror movies that I've been re- reviewing this month, they're already available to stream. Like even though they came out a couple weeks ago because they wanted them all out so that people can stream them on Halloween. <laughs> I'm trying to see if there's a date. Oh, it, it looks like okay. Well, Apple TV. If you search it, it does look like you can watch it on Apple TV right now. Oh, okay. Um, so it looks like it's already released. So you don't have to go see it at the theater if you'd prefer to watch it in your own. If you home. want to pause and take and go to the bathroom and not miss a murder scene like uh, like Demon Mama had. Yeah, to, like I did. I missed that. one of them. Um, <laughs> yeah, and uh, so um, I was trying to think of of uh, of if there were other things that I wanted to to say about the uh, the film. Um, of course, it's a period piece. Um, and uh, and so, like, I already mentioned that the costuming is really good, but I also think that the set work is phenomenal, um, down even to the way that they, like, handle lighting and the fact that, like, um, <laughs> all of the, like, all of the night shots have, like, this greasy, like, oil, you know, oil light um, uh, uh, energy to them all. Oh, yeah, the gr- the general just griminess of the film especially there's this one the one scene there's a scene where um where Leonardo DiCaprio's character is like questioned for a really long period of time 
And mm-hmm. I, I, I really loved that scene because it's like, first of all, there's like, they keep paying attention to the like flies that are like trapped in the room. He keeps getting flies landing on him and he has to bat them away. Yeah. And, and it's like, and like he's getting all sweaty and greasy and disheveled over the course of the, the hours like that is being depicted there. And like also his character, like I, I really do think the, oh yeah, we, we should talk about the performances. Maybe that's what we can like sort of end on is talking yeah. about the performances. But um, it, I really love just how much attention to detail there is in like presenting just a, a grimy world of, 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 uh, uh, of, of really seedy people who put themselves in horrible situations uh, and, especially Leonardo DiCaprio's character. So the, the performance was, um, one of the guys, um, the, the guy's name was Blackie. He was one of the, uh, the hitmen uh-huh. that they had hired. Um, I was actually just doing a little bit of research on the movie. And like, I found that guy actually has his own Wikipedia page and oh, wow. they've got his photo. And the actor they got from is a dead ringer. They got somebody who looks just like him. I looked at him like, wait, I saw that guy in the movie. That's his face. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, Leo, Leo does great. Um, I was expecting Leo to do great. And also it's very, very interesting to point out that um, when Scorsese was first planning this movie with DiCaprio, he wanted DiCaprio to play the FBI agent who was investigating the yeah. uh, the murders. But DiCaprio said, no, I want to play the husband who's doing them. Yeah. And, and I think that was such a good choice. Oh, my God. What it would have been choice. a completely different movie like uh, uh, um from having the focus be on the plot so that we see everything going on from the inside rather like that kind of lets it play out a little bit more chronologically like i think if dicaprio was playing the investigator well then he would show up after most of the murders had already happened yeah um and he'd be piecing things together that way i I think it's yeah it would have been a very different film and i think there probably wouldn't have been as much opportunity for the osage story itself to be told like for, yeah, for their I, for their story i agree with that i think it would have been like obviously uh, you know both of us mentioned that we, we think it would have been better if there was more room for the osage perspective but um but but yeah it would have been way worse if it was uh if it had been leonardo dicaprio in the fbi agent's role in the current iteration of the film the final version of the film uh jesse plemons Right, that's his name. Uh, yeah. plays the uh plays the FBI agent, which I I thought he did a great job. Um, well, I, I really like Jesse Plemons. Uh, if, yeah. if you don't know He's the good. the name, he play he was uh Todd in Breaking Bad, yes. or as as the fans likes to call him back in the day, Meth Damon, because he looks like Matt Damon, but he was cooking meth. Yeah. So um, um and he's great. I, I like him in everything Breaking I've Bad. seen. Yeah, he's good. Yeah. He's really good. I think um I think uh. I, I really I really can't like praise the performances in this enough. Lily Lily Gladstone um uh playing Molly Burkhart um amazing um agonizing performance. I I I I do wish that we got to see more uh more scenes of uh of like the 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 early and late parts of the film where like because she's really sick for most of the movie. And while yeah. she portrays that incredibly well, there's just also a lot where she's just uh, like not lying very around consci- conscious. Yeah. And that's unfortunate. Yeah. It's, a, it's because... a very passive role for a lot of it. And I, I think I mentioned to you in the theater that she's going to get the Oscar for this film, but I don't think she was given the material to merit it. Um, I mean, I think she knocked it out of the park at the beginning and end. And I wish there had been more, but. Uh, and I'm not going to I'm not going to be mad if she gets the Oscar for it, because I do think that the parts where she was given a more active role were fantastic, especially as there's a there's a a sort of scene that sort of caps off her character story towards the end of the film. And it echoes right back. Oh, that, that was good. Uh, yeah, it was amazing. I know the one you're talking about. It's basically where she she sort of has her moment of closure on recognizing Yes, I have been completely and utterly betrayed by every person, every white person that I've trusted in this entire film, including my fucking husband. And so that's like her her moment of like closure. And it's it the it's it is uh this incredibly powerful, understated performance of that just it it's it's burns into your memory. And part of it too, it like it echoes back to the beginning where there's a there's ironically uh it's a line by uh by robert de niro's character um where he says oh you know don't 
don't start doing, uh, you know, don't just chat to fill up space. The, you might think that the, the Osage people are quiet, but they're always listening, they're always <laughs> watching, and they know everything. And um, that moment really, like, it, it's like, it's like a, the, the prophecy comes back around. Like, this, you know what I mean? Like, where it's yeah. like, yeah, she, she had no, she had almost nothing to work with, no assistance, and had to figure this out for herself from her own, like, like just going through the agony. Like, her, the only information she really gets to be able to um, piece any of what happens together is from her own observations while she's deliriously ill. And and she only comes to like, even to that moment that I'm talking about of like confronting the gaslighting that she experienced, confronting this deception. She only even gets that because she has a such a severe medical episode that while she's like out of the town that she has to go to like a recovery center that's distanced from her like home context and they have no motivation to like mistreat her so she finally receives like medical Proper traumatic me yeah but it like it's traumatic and so she's able to observe through her own feelings like i was being poisoned and like yeah. oh my god it's it is so good and in the beginning of course when they're sort of like when they're having their when when uh when leo is like trying to win her over her heart uh her like the way that she she pr presents this character with such uh, insight and dignity, and she's so uh, she's so like uh, almost cold in some ways because she's just yes. like not having his shit, and yet mm -hmm. she's not cold. He is able to like to like uh, warm up with her, and 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 she has so much feeling, but she has like a a, a strong defensiveness that it, it's it's incredible. I think her performance is really good, and I do think that it's a little bit regrettable that so much of the of the movie is her like sick and in agony and in like like literally delirious or unconscious or you know passed out. Um, and maybe maybe a part of that just enhances the parts where she is, you know. I mean, there is that do, it does certainly enhance the tragic aspect of like this beautiful person, um, you know, who has so much life and so much to say, and is just like debilitated because some fucking scumbag wants her money, you know. Yeah. There was there was one um, scene in the film that I noticed was not physically possible uh -huh. um that uh, it, it was very striking to me because for a lot of the film scorsese has been very deliberate to show things um just presenting them very matter-of-factly uh -huh. but um after um uh, uh william hale has like set his farm on fire for the insurance money oh yeah there with the fbi go, watching <laughs> <laughs> with the FBI watching, because one of them is undercover as his insurance salesman. Yeah. And, but anyway, it goes to Everett and Molly's place. And you can see the fire outside the window, except they aren't living near his farm. Uh, uh, like, uh, um, oh. uh, William Hale's farm is out in, 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 out in the sticks, whereas uh, uh, Everett and Molly, they're living in a community with a bunch of other houses, like wh where all of her, her siblings were living. So, like there wouldn't have been the fire right outside the window because there would have been another house outside the window. Yeah, that did But we can see, see the I thought fire that, there. I thought they were supposed to be staying over at his place when it happened. Oh, was it that? It could have been that, but the I, way I read it I was more just like the the just the presence of, of uh, William Hale there was just like, you know, as he is destroying the world around them it, even though they're not physically right next to his thing but even then they can still see it outside the window yeah i thought that was kind of the the implication of that scene okay but you I might could, be I you might be right because my... it is now that i'm thinking of it it is her bedroom from their house yeah. and like there is another part right near there because she's like at that point she's like in the worst health that she's been so far in the movie and she keeps having um visions of various types including one where um where uh bill hale like he like comes into the room and talks to her and then mm -hmm. she's like are you real or whatever and he's like i might be you know what i mean yeah and so uh, you might be right you might be that like that scene is actually supposed to be sort of from her perspective and and or 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 even just like that the room is burning because uh because 
like she's literally in the in the throes of like a deadly fever and in er in Ernest's mind like he knows all of it. He knows that they're burning down the house right then. So maybe the fires yeah. aren't actually supposed to exist at all. It's only supposed to be a sort of visual aspect for us to see, but but that's communicating what's inside. I don't know. I For some reason, when I saw that scene, I assumed they were over there and that they were leaving because there were so many people that like, oh, they're not actually like setting the house on fire. They're like burning the land right now. Now we're going to go leave. Like it's, uh, you know, like we're escaping or whatever. But I don't yeah. know. I think you might be right. I, I, it it would definitely need a second watch and further analysis. This was just something that, you know, a note that I had jotted down. Yeah, I will theater. be watching this again. I will be watching this one again with um, Doe and my part, my other partners because, um, yeah, I want to see it again. Um, well, um, even when the rough. Oscars... When the Oscars start up, like uh, as part of my channel, I, I plan to watch every single film that is nominated. Wow! And so, um, and that will probably also just involve rewatching some of the other stuff because depending on like what something gets nominated for, it might be in a category that I hadn't particularly paid attention to in the film. So, uh, yeah, that 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 should be a uh, that should be an interesting project. So I will definitely be giving this film a rewatch at some point. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I guess um, if there's nothing else that uh, there's nothing else right immediately on my mind, I would say I strongly to all of my viewers, I strongly recommend going to see Killers of the Flower Moon um, for so many reasons. But uh, also, if if you can think of no other reason to go think to go see this movie, you need to see the the incredible costume work. I mean, it is I have not seen a film in recent memory that has put so much love and care into the costume work all the way throughout. I'm talking from beginning to end. And of course the the Osage uh, uh, historical clothing that is on display is, is in and of itself, you know, fantastic. But the overall film as well just has really great costume work. So I, I recommend it strongly. Um, and, and, uh, and then if you wanna say anything, final thoughts on the film, then we can sort of wrap it off here. Yeah, um, I would say, uh just to uh, again reiterate um i think it's an important story um and i just am trying to be cognizant of the factors that, that go into uh deciding whose part of the story gets told and why and you know i don't think it's a perfect film um but i think it's very important and yeah. um I think it's going to spark a lot of conversation and uh, I think that probably might be it's uh, hopefully it's most lasting um, uh, impact, uh, yeah. but we'll, we'll see. Yeah, I, I hope so too. I really hope it gets people. I, I mean, it's a very visceral confrontation with a real piece of history that most people don't know um, like at all. So I do think that it, it, it succeeds in that front, and I hope that it has great success in, in uh, you know, I, obviously raising awareness is, is always a, a limited uh, political victory, but I think it's an important one nonetheless, and uh, I think this film does a very good job of it. Um, yeah, so that was our review of Killers of the Flower Moon. Uh, by Martin Scorsese. Uh, and uh, Gayfesh, thank you so much for coming on. Do you want to just do a quick shout out for your channel, get all these wonderful viewers over there, and then we'll uh, we'll call it good? Yeah, absolutely. I'm Gayfesh. You can find me at youtube.com slash Gayfesh. You can also find all of my links at gayfesh.com. I don't have a White Forest site yet. That just goes to an all my links page. But um, you can find me there. You can find me on Twitter, uh, I'm at gayestfesh. You can find me on Blue Sky. I'm at gayfesh.com there. And um, if you liked what you uh, heard, I do um, the I do movie reviews every Thursday evening. Um, I watch two or three movies a week that are uh, currently in in theaters, and I uh, give my thoughts on those. I also cover a lot of. Um, Hollywood news in general, I do a lot of strike coverage, and I also play video games. I've been, uh, Super Mario Wonder just came out, so I've been playing a lot of that, but I also, um, I just beat Celeste last Based. week, and I'm still cis, so, you know. What? <laughs> I I'm know, sorry. right? 
<laughs> well, uh, somebody told me that it doesn't count because I haven't beat the 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 B and C sides yet. So I guess mm, maybe I have gotta, to do that to make sure to be to be sure. But um, yeah, uh, come on over. Um, give me a subscribe. I'm actually I just broke 900 subscribers, so I only need a hundred oh. more to get 1,000, which is one of the three criteria I need to get channel monetization. Uh. The other two, one of which is easy to do, it's just have three uploads in the last 90 days. And I'm doing daily uploads on my channel. So if you want to see Based. new reviews, they're posted every day or new, um, you know, strike news, Hollywood news, all of that. Um, and also uh, watch time. I need like 1500 more watch hours. So, so if you want to watch my stuff, so close to get that channel monetization and make that, you know, uh, uh underpaid uh google adsense money <laughs> yeah i would all right everybody i think we can get gay fesh a bunch of new subscribers and then you can all have a bunch of awesome stuff to watch that will get those watch time numbers up um gay fesh thank you so much for coming on this was a wonderful wonderful conversation and i look forward to uh, hopefully doing another movie review sometime in the future i would love that to would this. be this fun. Has been great yep all right have a good night bye have a good day Hey, we did it. That was a wonderful conversation. Uh, I do highly recommend checking out the movie. I think it was phenomenal. Uh, obviously, I don't think it's a perfect movie. I don't think many perfect movies exist, but it was incredibly good. I really enjoyed it. And the more I've thought about it, the more I've um, the more I've come to like it. Um, Gayfesh does a ton of really cool... It was really fun to go watch it. Uh, Gayfesh and I watch a lot of movies together. Um, and this is the first one we've actually reviewed together, but I want to do this again in the future um, because I think that Gayfesh is really well-informed on movies, has good taste in films, and um, though we have different taste in films, so I think we have a lot to talk about and a lot of different things that we think about. Um, yeah, so um, that was really great. Thank you all for watching, and of course, make sure that you hit like on the video and subscribe, and if you have friends who you think might want to check out this review, share it to them. Anyway, thank you all very much, my lovely, lovely imps. And I'll, uh, and uh, we'll have even more coming for you soon.